General MacArthur's military career ended when he was removed from command on April 5, 1951, by President Harry Truman. Upon hearing this decision, MacArthur, with a sigh of relief, in a strong but gentle voice, said to his wife, Jeannie, we're going home at last. Upon his return to the U.S., General MacArthur was greeted as an exalted hero by huge crowds in San Francisco, New York, and Washington, D.C., where he addressed a joint session of Congress, closing his 52 years of military service with the now famous words, That old soldier never die. They just fade away. Next, MacArthur accepted the long-standing invitation from Marquette University President Father O'Donnell to come to Milwaukee to receive an honorary Doctor of Laws degree in a ceremony at the Marquette Football Stadium. On the morning of April 27, 1951, the MacArthurs were enthusiastically greeted by thousands of Milwaukeeans at General Billy Mitchell Airport, while local schools and businesses closed for the historic event. Thirty years after this event, Father O'Donnell reflected on what happened that day with the General. When I think about the really exciting events that occurred during my 13 years as Marquette president, the tall, courtly figure of General Douglas MacArthur inevitably comes to my mind. The General's plane arrived at Mitchell Field and the entire city turned out to greet him. The populace greeted him with great enthusiasm. Everywhere the streets were lined with flag-waving, cheering people. April 27, 1951 was a day to be remembered in Milwaukee. The motorcade crept slowly up Wisconsin Avenue to the stadium where 20,000 people roared their approval of a hometown hero's return. On the official bunting drape platform erected especially for the ceremony, the hood denoting his honorary degree was placed across the general's shoulders. He smiled broadly and stepped to the microphone. In the background, Mrs. MacArthur and the couple's son sat proudly watching as the general began to speak. His words were gracious, his tone courtly. The crowd went wild. Everything after that was anti-climax. Crowds pressed forward to see the famous man as the party left the stadium for a tour of the city. I rode with the general in his official car as we toured Milwaukee. He hadn't bargained for this, nor had we. He was very obviously fatigued, yet when the motorcade reached MacArthur Square, he acknowledged the greetings of the crowd graciously. MacArthur addressed 40,000 people that day at MacArthur Square, and according to police estimates, nearly one million people crowded the streets of Milwaukee along the route of his motorcade. Before he departed, MacArthur invited Father O'Donnell to visit him and Mrs. MacArthur at the Waldorf Astoria Towers in New York City. Father O'Donnell and the General exchanged regular correspondence and, the following year, they met for two hours in New York City. Father O'Donnell was actively seeking General MacArthur's papers for the new Marquette Library. At the time, the General seemed willing to donate his papers, along with various artifacts, to Marquette. The crown jewel of this collection was the Sword of Tojo, which had been presented to General MacArthur during the Japanese surrender. Following the death of General MacArthur, however, the city of Norfolk, Virginia secured his papers and memorabilia as part of a much larger and dedicated memorial building. Marquette University, however, remains a special place for MacArthur, and he expressed his clear recollections to Father O'Donnell. MacArthur remembered that on his way to Westside High School in preparation for the West Point exams, he had passed the university every day and according to the meeting transcripts, he very definitely said that if he hadn't gone to West Point, he would have come to Marquette. 